your spot in the bridal show at the Indiana Mall today. Information presented on this program is believed to be factual and up to date, but we do not guarantee its accuracy and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. Discussions and answers to questions do not involve the rendering of personalized investment advice, but are limited to the dissemination of general information. A professional advisor should be consulted before implementing any of the options presented. Encompass More Asset Management is registered as an investment advisor with the SEC and only transacts business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. Registration with the SEC does not imply a certain level of skill or training. And the guys are here, Clint Smith, Galen Bargerstock. Let's get into it this morning. All right, gentlemen, good morning to both of you. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful. It's good to have you both with us here today as we talk about investment advice. And uh, Clinton, you have yourself in your tiny little hand over the other way, a book. I do. And the book is? So uh, a long time ago, we decided that we were going to write a book. And honestly, all of the books in our industry are super boring. It's like life insurance, chapter one annuities chapter two retirement chapter three social security chapter four now some people find that really exciting stuff yeah yeah, yeah there, there are some people but usually they're the people in our industry that find it exciting <laughs> yeah. uh so we wanted to do something that appealed to everyone so galen and i actually wrote this it came out right when COVID hit so we never mm-hmm. really got to do a, a release party uh COVID kind of killed all that but it's an awesome book. It's the story of Carl and Barb. We didn't want to do, like like I said, chapter by chapter. So we came up with hypothetical characters mm-hmm. that are basically cartoons. I mean, you can tell from the book that they're cartoons. Hold it up. Uh, oh, just... And so with the book, our, our artist was Shauna Jones, who is our marketing director now, and Melissa Hauser. Uh, but it's a collection of stories about a family, Carl and Barb, and how it is that they come to work with us. They're both postal employees. Um, the father, Pap, the kids are Emily and Jacob, and it really tells the story of what it's like as a family working with us and what it's like to go through that retirement process Mm -hmm. to go from working to retired. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to bring that in for you. you Thank you. Signed it and everything. Thank you. Signed it and everything. By golly, he did. Yeah. Might be worth $5 on Amazon now. Oh, it was until Uh, you signed it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but it's it's an awesome book. It's actually, uh, you would think that it would be a boring read since it's about life insurance and retirement, but mm-hmm. we put a lot of fun into it, and it's uh, it's a pretty fun read. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I see two of the main characters are named Clint and Galen. Yep. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, but it, it really is, you know, for folks who don't have a background in it at all, um, to get this is sort of like a primer, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's a great way to ease them into understanding how it goes working with us. And just because they're postal employees, it literally works the same way with anyone else. We still know how to go through everyone's benefits and figure out everything that they have for themselves and what to do moving forward. Yeah. 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 All right. So let's talk a little bit about moving forward. We're in, uh, well, today is actually the first day that people can file their taxes, isn't it, Gail? It is. It is. Uh, well, uh, so folks have finance on their mind right yeah. now and, and so do the two of you let's talk a little bit about um the plans for you guys going forward in in terms of what we're doing here on the radio uh because there are definite plans and yep. they might be changing a little bit yeah so uh we've enjoyed coming on your show you're amazing i've appreciated you uh i mean even united way stuff everyone in indiana listens to you in the morning and finds out what's going on in town and that was where we wanted to start you know starting to talk with you We are going to be transitioning within the next couple months into our own show on Renda. Uh, Time and dates to be decided. Mm -hmm. Um, But our plan is to actually do our own 30-minute segment on Renda where we can actually dive in deeper to more financial details than we can get in here on 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to make sure that uh, we still keep you uh, uh, when we can can get you and grab you here. Uh, But uh, that will give folks a chance uh, to really – Dig down, won't it, Galen, on, on to what they have uh, on their minds when it comes to uh, getting themselves the, the correct financial advice. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I, I love coming on here and talking about, you know, general information, but we're going to have people actually call in, ask us questions that they have on their mind, and address those questions. So it comes back to me saying everybody's always different. So we're going to see what everybody has, you know, the questions on their mind and mm-hmm. see what's out there. 
Mm -hmm. All right. That being the case, you do get questions all the time, maybe not in that form just yet, but uh, questions all the time. What are some of the most common questions people have when it comes to saving for retirement? I think the most, the biggest question is, do I have enough? Will that money last me for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the biggest questions. Am I ready to retire? Mm -hmm. You know, it's different for everybody. And a lot of times it's better than what people think it is. Um, it's just that that is the biggest question. Is there enough? Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, that, that goes even deeper than just, is there enough yeah. money? People's health plays a huge role in their deciding to retirement. I would say, I mean, he gets asked the questions more than I do, but I would say it's more about eligibility. When am I able to retire mm-hmm. without penalty? And then after that, do I have enough to retire? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw, we had this survey that was out last week or so. I think it was, uh, talking about, uh, on Google Trends, um, for each state in the union, what's the most um, often asked question about when they can retire? And for Pennsylvania, what it was, can I retire at age 50? Um, a bunch of people in Pennsylvania want to retire evidently at age 50 <laughs> or between 50 and 55 years of age. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and that's a really specific age if somebody is, is aiming in that direction. But it's possible, isn't it? It is. And retirement is on your own terms. I mean, one of the biggest trends that I see right now um, is people do want to jump ship and they want to retire, even if they don't have as long as they have the years in and they can you know, start collecting maybe. But a lot of people just want out of what they're currently doing. Mm-hmm. And, and I think COVID had a lot to do with people like maybe reflecting on their lives and seeing what's important, because that is the biggest thing that I see. People are willing to get a part-time job to make ends meet in the outside world yeah. just to shake things up a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know? But but they want to be planning right now yeah. for whatever their yeah. intended retirement date is. And um, as, as Galen said, Clint, uh, you know, somebody might want to retire uh, very young, in their 40s or 50s. Yeah. Uh, others might say to themselves, I, I want to keep working all the way until I'm uh, ready to step off the globe. Yeah. We actually, uh, in the very, I mean, when, I want to say this was probably even 10 years ago now, so that it was pre-COVID, but we, it is possible. Do you know what I mean? If you have enough money saved that you're able to live off of that money until you can collect Social Security and stuff like that, mm-hmm. there are ways to make it happen. Um, you know who I'm thinking of, right? I'm not off the top of my head. Of uh, the couple, uh, Betty and Diane, we'll call them. Yeah. Uh, they had enough money. They were able to retire. Both of them had like $350,000 in their investments, investment accounts, and they were able to literally just start, retire at like 50 and 52 years old. Uh-huh. Uh, but it was a package deal, and there were certain things that we had to do to get them from there to Social Security age, mm-hmm. but they had enough money in their investments that they were able to rely on that until they could move on to Social Security. Yeah, yeah. Do most people say to themselves, all right, I just need to get up to that particular age. At, at that point, I'll be, be able to begin collecting Social Security and, and therefore – uh, I can let that handle most of the burden of my expenses in daily life. Yes, because what you said, the burden. So the burden is taken off their back, and they know they have a guaranteed income coming in for the rest of their life. So Social Security plays a huge factor. Yeah. And with federal employees getting a supplemental Social Security or a bridge until they reach that date, mm-hmm. you know that's what helps them get out a lot earlier. But, you know, like Clinton said, there's so many things you can do on the outside world to prepare for what you're uh, to co- complement what your pension and social security are going to do. Mm-hmm. And having said that, of course, people that want to retire before social security kicks in, there are many people who work until well after social security oh, yeah. has been able to kick in. And as long as they're planning correctly, uh, they can have a really, really comfortable life. Can they not? We've met people that like should have retired 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, so like we met people I know a in few the, of those in their 80s, <laughs> you know. Uh, so there's definitely I mean there's a ton of people that should have retired again different for everyone. There are people that want to retire early, mm-hmm. people that will be already maxed out their pension, already have been eligible for social security for 5 years. Yeah. They just love to work. They like working. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. yeah. That's fine, but at the same time, you can help people to plan and to make the wisest investment of their money. That's really what it's all about, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, one of the things that I do with pretty much every single person that sits down is I break down their Social Security age. Mm-hmm. So I'll figure out that because a lot of people think, hey, well, if I wait till 67 or 70, I'm going to get this dollar amount, which is so much higher than, you know, 62 or 65. 
but I'll do an analysis on it and tell you when your break even point is because if you're collecting at 62 versus 67, well, think of all that money that you could have had in the household during that time period. Yeah. So you might not see any more until, you know, let's say 75, you know, mm-hmm. but I'll figure out exact number out when I meet with you. But, you know, that's one of the things that you need to prep for to yeah. know how it works. Social Security, it might go up to three hundred, four hundred dollars mm-hmm. at that different age, but then you're missing all of the money you collected on in between sixty two and sixty seven yeah. or sixty five. Plus there are plenty of people who are saying Social Security isn't even going to be around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. uh you know, the government will do something. Uh there will there'll always be something that they're they're going to do, but finding your way to best use that to your best advantage is yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. And that's where uh, GCS helps. A lot of people don't even know Social Security is insurance. Yep. It's a social insurance that's there for us to make sure that older people have money and an income if they don't have any other way to do it. So it's really a social insurance. It's meant to keep the country from having a bunch of elderly people who are poor and broken, like bro- like no money, relying yeah. on their family. Yeah. It's social insurance. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's what it is. Uh, and if we can just convince the government to stop taking money yeah, out of right. it for other purposes, <laughs> yeah. we'd, be, we'd be in good shape. Well, gentlemen, uh, we're just about out of time here. Folks want to know about GCS. They they want to set up an appointment with you guys to talk about it. What should they do? They can give us a call, 724-915-0000. But also, we're going to start taking questions. If anyone has any questions, mm-hmm. um, can they call in here while we're live? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that can happen. I don't know what that number is. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure that, uh, <laughs> that they know. Uh, yeah. You're, you're done here today, so it doesn't yeah. really make sense to give out the numbers, but the numbers are 479-1160 or 349-1160. WCCS. Yeah, and we'll, we'll we're going to start taking questions live next week. If you have questions, you can email them to us or give us a call. You can email Shauna. It's S H A W N A at GCES dot US not dot com, um, and she can uh, get your e- questions via email. You can mm-hmm. also give us a call at seven two four nine one five zero 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 in between now and next Monday if you have a question, and we will answer it on air. There you go. Yeah, there you go, guys. Thanks. Thank you so much, Todd. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. This is Boomer Science with the CBS.